Eh, seguimos con una ponencia del proyecto Lazo del Ministerio de Cultura. Eh, es hablar sobre cultura, tecnología y comunidad de, del proyecto que lleva ya varios años y ha sido muy interesante el apoyo a los artistas nacionales por parte del Ministerio de Cultura. Continuamos con ellos. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for being here and thank the Ministry of Culture for having given us the possibility of being here to Robert and to me. We are not officials of the ministry. We are beneficiaries of a Ministry of Culture project called LASO, uh, Culture and Entrepreneurship Labs. Why are Robert and I here? Well, there are many people who could be here, but we came. We are from the northern coast of Colombia, and our story starts in 2007. We're from Barranquilla in Cartagena. When somebody that maybe uh, many of you know, Ivan Benavides, was asked to travel from city to city looking for initiatives related especially to music to set up what have been called the content, digital content production centers with a strong emphasis on music at that time, for the first time I met him and in Cartagena he met Robert and in the Colombian northwestern coast of Choco he met others, people linked to hip hop and rock and drum and in the culture of electronic music. Everything that has been addressed here in being independent and everything that lies outside the mainstream, but which in one way or another has enormous potential in Colombia and which is evident with groups such as Bomba Stereo, Sistema Solar, which have transcended Colombian new sonorities outside of Colombia, have them transcend. So this has been the goal of LASO, social and cultural and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial labs in Colombia. Seeks, LASO seeks to connect different disciplines in Colombia, video making, music producers, and people doing theater, people who are doing audiovisual work, so that in one way or another they can uh, make use of tools that can help them become stronger in areas that have been addressed here, the cultural and creative industries in the digital world. So the LASO project began to establish production centers in different parts of Colombia, seeking to strengthen the scene especially with a very specific profile having to do with people who are behind the machines and who record and register uh, act serving as not only recording engineers and live sound and music producer uh, engineers and work sometimes done empirically but which now can become certified through a government agency called the SENA, the Colombian Vocational Training Institute, in order to precisely continue to strengthen the urban music movement in Colombia, for example. Currently, there are 19 such production centers established in Colombia, the Caribbean coast, the Pacific coast, the coffee-growing region, and the uh, San Andres Islands. There is no institute in Bogota, because in Colombia, many things ha can happen as we can see here in Colombia, but which you may know uh, about in terms of strengthening the different initiatives that are, are distributed throughout the country in which somehow or another we're all isolated with respect to such as in Medellin and Bogota. But the two experiences that we want to share with you briefly related to the LASO project are on the one hand Robert's experience he works in the city of Cartagena, but his work is very specific and significant with the community of San Basilio de Palenque near the city of Cartagena. And on the other hand, a festival that I am part of called La Tregua, which seeks to provide technical and conceptual tools to all the people related to the University of the DJ and BJs. So I leave you first with Robert so that he can talk to us about his experience. Good afternoon to everyone 
present here. I would rather like to tell you what my experience was like and how I, how I was able to enter the Lasso project, become a member. I'm a music producer. I've been working, producing music for about 12 to 15 years already, producing urban music. I started out mainly with the sub-hop music. Currently, I have a seal, a, a label called Cacerolo Records. Through it, I have been able to become part of the Lasso project. When the initiatives started in each one of the departments, as uh, Olofre said with Mr. Ivan Benavides, this is there are a series of productions, including a, a very interesting artist here in Cartagena called John Primera, who is part of the solar system, Sistema Solar group, and uh, a woman called Geke and another gentleman called Chekte, among others, and other productions that I've been able to direct. So since the Lasso project was about this, looking for those producers located in each of one of the different departments, the most significant producers who had time, they contacted me and I started working with the Ministry of Culture in this project since then. Currently I am working in the SEN Network, the Colombian Vocational Training Institute, which has houses the production center in Cartagena and I've been working there since 2009. We have a recording studio there where we have already done some interesting work. We have also done some videos. And also, let me show you some images of the people I've done some production work for. I would like to touch on a topic within the project called the software and technology tools that we used we use to produce the songs and the like. Speaking about this, it's interesting to say that the development of technology, whether it be software or other, has made it possible to work on these music projects. In Cartagena, for example, we have this studio and we have sound cards, complete microphony, and we can work with all songs. And in the studio, we've done 15 songs, productions with Lu Louis Stower, Charles King, among other artists whom you may perhaps know. Aside from this, I am part of a process in the nearby city of Palenque, where the Ministry of Culture took the Lasso project. There in Palenque, what we are trying to do is fuse traditional music of Palenque, which is Lumbalu, Chalupa, and other genre that they have there with urban music and with the traditional music they do, for example. In Palenque we've done approximately six songs entailing a fusion of hip-hop with traditional music with drums and, these and the like. The most attractive thing about this is that the songs have been done in the Palenque language of the local inhabitants. This is something attractive with the Palenque community. I reached Palenque because, as I said, I am independent and once I had the chance to visit Palenque and as can happen everywhere, especially in these municipalities, there are talented people there. 
but there is no one to help them um, make progress. So once when I was visiting Palenque, leaving the House of Culture, Casa de la Cultura de Palenque, I met with several youngsters who were doing a round. So one was doing music work with his mouth, the other one was improvising with the Palenque language. And I thought that this was very interesting and that they would need the assistance of people from outside to proceed with their work to produce it. So that's when I arrived with the proposal to hold this course in Palenque, offer it there. And it was done and now a studio has been provided there with good infrastructure uh, and good technology available. And the Palenque community, as you may know, is quite poor. And the assistance provided by the Ministry of Culture has been very important. We've done several works already. Last Easter we worked with the Ministry of Culture on some songs sung in the Palenque language, highlighting everything related to the local Palenque food. These songs were recorded in Palenque language and were delivered to the Ministry of Culture for a forthcoming CD. I would also like to say at this point, mention the allies that the Lasso Project has in Cartagena. The Lasso Project in Cartagena has several entities that are part of what we call the committee, the local committee. In Cartagena we have the Chamber of Commerce that has a program called Cartagena uh, Starts Culture where we have uh, like a portfolio of artists that are in Cartagena. Eventually we have the presence here of SENA, the National Apprenticeship uh, Institute that is an ally of the Ministry of Culture to carry on the project in the city. We also have a foundation called Metropoli that has uh, cooperated since the start of the project in Cartagena and eventually we will do a CD uh, by the end of October sponsored by Metropoli. We have the IPCC which is the Cartagena's Cultural Patrimony Institute that supports the project LASSO and invite us in some presentations on in the city as well as in cultural markets. And last, we have Cacerolo Records, which is my study, my studio actually. I have uh, cooperated with many songs and uh, final mixes and everything that has to deal with uh, the songs that are done inside the production center in Cartagena. That's mm, most of what we do, what we are doing in Cartagena currently with the lasso process. I would like to free to talk about the experience that he has in Barranquilla. He has a different perspective than the one in Cartagena. Well, I'm just uh, retaking what Robert was saying. We have the digital content production centers of Lasso uh, have helped a lot, for example, in the case of Palenque, to be able to record that memory of the country. In other words, those are production centers that are open to the community that if it is true that we have talked a lot about cloud business distribution, online distribution, that is like a, a stage that is beyond, we have a lot to crop in the country of the traditional sounds of all the fusions that are being done. So let's say that those content production centers that have a focus on music but pretends to extend or enlarge as a project that is strengthened. So it looks for supply that need, which is to know the nation and contribute 
to the fact that the people perhaps doesn't have don't have the uh, intention of selling their music just but to put it there and leave it there so that is a presentation okay i also got to lasso due to this event that is called three war attack three war attack with ivan benavides we had a strong work with the hip-hop culture from which i am part but as time has passed it has been modified also by the personal interests and the uh, dynamics of what we have been doing robert please let's say that we have started to work with these that we call a community of sound explorers and imaging real-time image we summarized in those two words dj and vj the djs help rebuild that phonographic memory from remixes or matchups but also to keep it alive because they circulate the music that the bands are producing that it achieves they put them in a cd or the lps and the other side the vjs that reconfigure everything that deals with the image and do it they do it in real time that has been the approach that we have had in the last uh, recent times what we propose from the festival is to question us whether we are only users or if we decide to be producer or developers and if there is like a, a final distinction between them we are clear that we are IT users we are a movement a community that use technology developed by others but we one way or another can produce and develop our own tools adapted to our own needs and that is like getting closer to demythify the myth uh, getting closer to the DNA of things and that has pushed us to not only being users but to start knowing how software is done to experience how a synthesizer is done uh, to get closer to the circuit bending uh, also to build the assolizer uh, the synthesizers uh, in other words to put in the practice of generating technology appropriate technology for our needs because sometimes let's say that one just starts doing loops uh, whether having access to software or to hardware and sometimes we just uh, bumped on the information that we have had in last of learning about uh, things or that has made other people to get closer to building their own devices to experience with image and our approach is right there not only leading edge technology using uh, software like Resolope or Map Mapper, but how can you do mapping with a, a slide a projector and cutting the silhouette? So that's the dialogue between leading edge technology and low technology, because we, anyways, although there are, is a lot of possibility to have an access to leading edge technology the most thing that exists is the so-called low technology or ancestral technology that are the knowledge of the ancestors the indigenous people how they are put in function of what a dj or vj can do uh, exploring image and sound we also believe that do it yourself and do it with others this was mentioned this morning do it yourself do it with others not only the individual portion but when you develop some own knowledge you have to put it to in movement and uh, you have to share with others and with that other or others there is knowledge new knowledge that appears and on the other side to take advantage of the tangible and intangible which is our hardware and software although the last thing that can can generate a very strong uh, controversy uh, for the people who are on the open uh, software side we consider that and it's the city where i'm coming from when there are many people user of the uh, licensed so licensed software there are also um, 
alternatives of open source, but there cannot be an immediate opening. I cannot pass from modulator to a processes or PCV because is to find with code uh, there is no graphical interfaces, so I have to write everything. There cannot be that big uh, cut. What we look for in the festival is to show that there are tools. These are the possibilities, these are the ones, and here it, each one takes what they need. The challenges that we have, and I believe that the lasso has, is uh, to be able to strengthen what is communication and connection with other nodes, not only with Colombia. Uh, we in the coast are like isolated you know, of what happened in the center area, the coffee area zone or the Indian uh, area or in the south of the country. Not only to be able to communicate, but also to strengthen that com connection because we have common interests and needs. We are developing uh, many things that if we shared information among ourselves, it would be easier. But it's not easy to know who is doing what, because that information is so easy to access or to be accessed. That is like the challenges that we are facing. However, we have been able to connect with those nodes or par or peers that are in other cities. This is important to us. The second point, it is something that everybody has to do, which is to perform research and production of knowledge. That is fundamental. That's what has been done in other places in the world. And that's why we are using the platforms that we are using. That's why we use YouTube and a lot of things that have been mentioned today that each one knows. That is because so many people have research and have produced knowledge and they put it there, transformed in an IT development, which is also part of what we uh, promote in the festival, but it's part of what is promoted as well in the LASSO project. Is uh, okay, produce, let's produce our own technology. We have 19 production centers. I have nothing against Mac, but, but say that the entire platform is Mac, but it could be another one. There could be other things. It's not to renounce to that, but it's to give the possibility that there could be IT developments above all because the project is linked to the Sena, it has a strong component in that, the people who train themselves to work technically. So let's say that it's not only a challenge of us as festival, but we also see it with what happens with LASO. And the last point, which also belongs to all of us, is the sustainability of projects. The social sustainability is given because each one is uh, into what one does and keeps it alive. But the other sustainability, which is economic or a political sustainability, we have to continue working on that. As I said, like I said, it's not our challenge, but the challenge that we see in all the production centers and we also see in the musical or visual scenery is how to achieve that, to how to generate a model. In Lasso, we're trying to work that to see what model is developed that allows sustaining or holding those content production centers in the long term and not to depend on the funding of the government, but they produce the money they need to sustain themselves and to produce employment costs. Well, the reciprocity lasso and festival, let's say that what we have received is like to start to think on this, all of this that we are uh, immersed in those creative or cultural industries. We are a festival. We generate employment, but we also circulate artistical proposals. At a certain point, we work with bands. We are uh, focused on DJs at this point in time. We work like the value chain that we have learned to know that we are part of a value chain and that we work not only one of the parts but also we don't work the distribution but we do work the uh, shows as exhibition circulation inclusive when we do the training processes that we do in the different points we are thinking of teaching or training of people so we are part of the industry but that we didn't know before 
I can say that it's something we have received to start to think that we are part of a big industry and we have to look at ourselves there. Not everything is business, but business is part of this. And what we can say that we have contributed to the festival, I mean the festival to Lasso, is to think that there can also be other ways of using technology, of appropriating it, to start investigating, producing knowledge, IT development. That, I think, is like the only festival that is part of the project. But we do not want to be the only ones. There are also people who can contribute a lot to these dynamics. So that is basically what we uh, had to, to say. That's the address of the festival, if we want to get more information. Here, we are two people that are part not of a festival or of a recording studio, but part of a social process that was created, but has a national dynamics at a country level that is called Lasso. Also, part of it in this scenario is to connect ourselves because everything that is done here feeds Lasso and everything that Lasso does can feed the different initiatives that are given not only in Resonance in Colombia that deal with music but in Colombia 3.0 uh, so that's what we wanted to tell you during this time I wanted to mention something that happens in Cartagena and the uh, Lasso project contributes a lot to that also on my part. In Cartagena, currently we are producing a lot of music, a lot of music, urban music, but from that, a lot of music, much music, if 100 are produced, 20 are good, but the others also sound or are heard. So the idea of project, uh, the Lasso project, as a project that works, is to start with some training sessions that last for three months and we see everything that deals from the point of what is sound, how is propagated, how sounds are equalized, how they are mixed, how to manage software, Reason, Rotos, Abletonos, among others, to so that the next producers in Cartagena know that there is a lot of opportunities provided to us by the software to improve sound and to change the uh, the audio uh, outlook that we have in Cartagena that is very saturated. But okay, here with the Lasso project, that is what we are trying to do that the sound in general has uh, other quality. So I don't know, that's what in Cartagena we are betting on a lot. And I am into that task so that all the people who come out of the training sessions, they can put their knowledge into practice. It was more or less what we wanted to mention to you of what is happening. I don't know if anybody has a question in this respect. Well, since Lasso is linked to the Sena, Sena, the Sena has a platform where you can get in and create your account, which is called Sofia Plus. There you get in, and there you get the information, the invitations, or where are they being. But in Cartagena, the invitations of the Lasso project are managed as closed ones. In other words, I get the people with the interested people in the community, and I enroll them in the course to start the classes. All 
of those who want to have access to the last of course they have to go to Sena to the studio to talk to me so that I can tell them directly when the invitations are open when the course is open to restart the requirements are not too many just to have, have up to uh, eighth grade and from there they can access the course there is no other requirement to enter the course Well, as such, I wouldn't be able to answer your question very strongly because I am not a member that is in the Ministry of Culture promoting that, but I am also in agreement with you. Although here in Bogota there are many studios and a lot of quality, much quality, it is important to know that not all of us have access to get to audiovisual or to get into a, an Attico center. So, from my perspective, I think it is important that here in the capital city, there should exist a production center for those people who do not have the opportunity of the or the possibility or of paying for a studio and that also they will be able to train themselves and to improve their conditions. But I don't know. That would uh, have to be commented directly to the Ministry of Culture. Any other questions? So, thank you. It was a pleasure for me to have been here with you. Oh, thank you. I've been, thank you very much to all of you. I hope it should have been very useful. I recommend to you to go now, right away, to the main tent, to the uh, panel of Richard Gutter, an entrepreneur of the musical industry. Uh, so, Richard Gutter, at 5.30 we have a, a showcase at Tato with the Petit Fellas and Los de la Van. We'll see each other tomorrow for starting at 9 a.m.